Well, hello everyone and welcome to our February webinar, Jumpstart Your Administrative Career. Woohoo! <laughs> we figured February would be a really good time to have this conversation with you. And I'm super, super excited about my guest today, Alexandra von Tiergarten. Um, I love Alexandra and I really got to know her, I think it was her last year, right? When we were working on conference together, she presented at our annual conference for administrative excellence last October and it was fabulous. And I could see all the attendees were sitting on the edge of their seats with everything you were saying and couldn't wait to ask you their career questions. So today we're going to give you that same opportunity and, um, we have a lot to talk about today. We've had many discussions, but first of all, I want to welcome everyone in. Yes, come on in from Puerto Rico, woohoo, DC, Canada, Seattle, Africa, South Africa. Hi, <laughs> we're so happy you're joining us today. My name is Joan Burge. I'm the founder and CEO of Office Dynamics International, and we are the lead in the development and presentation of sophisticated training programs and information for administrative office professionals. Woo! Then we're on our 33rd year of doing this. So we're very, very excited you're here. Oh my gosh, look at this. Kenya, Germany. Wow, isn't this fabulous, Alexandra? So exciting. So, <laughs> you could submit your questions. You can submit your questions anytime throughout the webinar. And Malia will be collecting those questions. Alexandra and I are going to talk first for about 40 to 45 minutes, although she's going to do most of the talking. This is her area of expertise. And then we'll go to our Q&A. Also, before I forget, Alexandra and Robert half have a lot of great extra information for you and we will be dropping links in the chat maybe throughout the webinar i think there's a few places we might do that we know for sure before we go to q a we're going to place those links in and alexandra will tell you about uh, what they're providing for you today great resources so without further ado let me introduce my friend and a business colleague Alexandra von Tiergarten. She is the district president at Robert Half, the world's first and largest specialized talent solutions firm. Based in Los Angeles, Alexandra oversees the company's finance and accounting permanent placement, contract finance and accounting, full-time engagement professionals, and administrative and customer support operations in Southern California. She began her career with Robert Half in 2003 and is dedicated to helping companies find top talent and professionals find rewarding careers. And guess what? Her very first job, she worked as an assistant for a <laughs> music industry executive woohoo, in Los Angeles. And she's going to tell us about that in a little bit. Welcome, Alexandra. Thank you so much, Joan. It's so wonderful to see you again. Um, wonderful to be part of this webinar today to talk about one of my favorite things, which is helping advance people's careers. So. Yeah, I'm very, very excited. So we're going to start off. Let's get a little of your background and, and starting your career um, as an assistant, could you share that with everyone? A absolutely. <laughs> so when I was in college in Los Angeles, I had interest in working in the music industry and I got an internship to work as an executive assistant for the head of business affairs at a music company. And he ended up hiring me before I graduated from college. So good tips for those out there that are in college and are looking for internships. So I accepted the job with six months of college to go and I did the job and I did school at the same time, but I worked for him for um, four and a half years. And, um, and, and I have a lot to credit that job for much of my success in my career. He was a great mentor. 
And he um, and I learned really great attention to detail being an executive assistant. It was real important that I didn't make mistakes. It was real important that I screened the calls correctly, um, even down to the way that I labeled his files in the office. Um, and when I was there at around the fourth year, he told me, you have to go out and get a new job. Like, oh. I want to push you out into the world and I want you to do more than being my assistant, even though I love having you here. And it, it was it was a great push for me. And that's how I ended up where I am now. But mm -hmm. um, but I have a lot to credit that job for giving me a great foundation in my career. Wow, oh, that's so interesting. I didn't know that um, about the pushing you out. Yeah. <laughs> But that's a good leader, right? A, a good leader, you know, wants to see you grow and mm -hmm. pursue other opportunities. And so that had to be exciting, though, being in the music industry. It was. I It was. And I, um, you know, it, it, it was funny because I was able to go to events and I was able to scout talent. And um, but my expense um, allowance was actually larger than my salary. And so <laughs> many of my friends loved all the things that I gave them access to, but, um, you know, moving other parts of my life forward, I, you know, needed to, um, needed to look for the next stage of my career. So. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. That would be fun. Oh, speaking of fun. I, sorry. I just saw my good friend, Paula Sandritter from Disney is on in the chat. Hi, Paula. I miss you. I haven't seen you in so long. Talking about a fun place to work, Walt Disney World. Sure. Woo -hoo. Yeah. As an executive <laughs> assistant. So uh, I had to give my shout out because uh, Paula and I have been good friends for quite a while. So anyway, I'm, I'm looking at on. the names in the chat too, because yeah, I know I have, some, I have some friends that have told me that they may be joining today. So it's oh, exciting. good, good. Well, we hope so. <laughs> so um, we have no particular order uh, of these questions that we're going to cover. We, Alexander and I talked about a lot of different things and they sent me a whole list of questions and there's so many good, good topics. So we pulled out uh, several that we wanted to approach with you today. And then depending on time, Alexander could go into more detail, but we do want to get to your questions as well. So first of all, I'm starting out with the piece where you, it really resonated with me. You talked about being memorable. People who just do their job are forgettable and we shouldn't become complacent. So I love that. I that resonated with me and I thought you could start us off talking about that. Yeah, absolutely. So I think sometimes doing the extra has gotten lost and a lot of people feel that if they do everything that's, you know, maybe on their job description when they were hired that they're doing what they need to do. And that's true, right? Because that's the description that you've been given, but you know, what do you want in your career? And do you want your career to move forward? Or do you want to feel safe where you are that, you know, you're going to be someone that they're going to want to keep, you know, if there's any shifts or changes in our economy, right? And mm -hmm. so you have to look for ways to be memorable. And especially as an executive assistant, you know, you are, your job is to anticipate the needs of who you're supporting. Your job is to look for that extra thing that maybe they don't know they need. And then you become someone that is ahead of what they're asking you to do. And that will truly, you know, make you memorable, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think I, I was just also thinking why we, we got into this conversation as well is because of the last few years where we've read a lot about um, employees quiet quitting, becoming complacent, becoming very comfortable now that they've been working from home a lot. They don't have to push themselves to, you know, get up, get dressed, go into the office. Some do, obviously, we know that as well. Um, and, and so that whole piece about the complacency, why, why isn't that healthy? You know, I mean, what would you say yeah, to that? I mean, um, I think that to me, 
in order to have job security and to feel good going into work every day, you, you need to feel like you're doing a great job for the person that you're working for. And so I'm always in my career, even today, asking the person that I work for, what do you think about what I'm doing? Is there anything else that I should be doing? You know, do you like this idea that I have? Right. Do you think that this is good for our operation? And these are the same questions that I was asking when I was an administrative assistant at the beginning of my career. You know, what else can I do? What what would be helpful for you? Right. And that, you know, that I think that really did create that bond for me and the person that I worked for. OK, excellent. And then the other uh, item I just thought of is explaining that there is a difference, um, I feel, with complacency and and yet taking a break. So I view it, you know, for our audience, we're not saying you've got to push, 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 climb, 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 and never, I call it a plateau and just rest a little bit, right? So explain the difference maybe because that's for not sure. what we think. Well, I think that that is a very valuable thing because sometimes people can work too much, right? So there's the reverse where they don't take time for themselves. They don't take a break. They don't take vacations because they feel like they always need to be on or if they're not there, then maybe they're going to miss out and you're not doing your best work then either. You know, mm -hmm. I often parallel this to myself as a parent. So I'm a parent of teenagers, but I'm, you know, I've always been a working mom. And I know for me, I'm a better parent because I work. And then, you know, I go back and then when I'm with them, I'm really with them. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know that if I, you know, if I tried to only be a parent, I don't know if I would be quite as engaged. And the same thing goes with your job, right? With your job, you need to work hard, look for those extra things that you can do, but you also need breaks, right? And you need to take that time for yourself and you need to take vacations, you know, that are appropriately given to you, you know, take that time and take lunches, you know, do those things during the day because then you'll come back from that and you'll be more engaged and you'll be more excited because especially in this environment where some of us are still hybrid, you're seeing them, you know, on a screen. You're not walking into a kitchen every single day and seeing them at the water cooler. So how you present yourself and whether or not you're in a good mood and you're happy to talk to them about the work you're doing, you know, or you're not in a good mood. So you don't put your camera on and you sound a little bit off. You know, it's like, you know, you've probably seen those memes about how people come across on text message versus actually picking up the phone and calling someone. So same same sort of thing applies. So long answer to your short question, <laughs> about take breaks, take that time for yourself so that when you come back to work, you know, you have a good attitude because a good attitude is a is a big piece, you know, in success. Thank you very much. Um, the next piece has to do with different phases of our careers. I, I think what we were talking about, well, we were talking about this webinar and you, maybe we were also talking about our audience and they're going to be in different, they could be in different phases of their careers and yeah. therefore what they're looking for might be different from others on the webinar. Absolutely. So I think it's really important to hit maybe like once a year, some people say every couple of years, do a deep dive into what you want from your career, right? And this is something that you have to do on your own and really think about it. And, you know, I usually sit down at the end of the year and I think about where my career is and what do I want to accomplish that year. Earlier in my career, I was really trying to decide what direction did I want to go? You know, what did I really want out of my career? You know, what sort of role did I want to have in three years or five years? Right. But you need to to do that own assessment, because for some people, you know, it may be I like myself. I was an executive assistant, but I knew that I wanted to, you know, maybe run a department someday or be in a role like I'm in now. Um, but I worked with other executive assistants at the time who are now very high level executive assistants in the entertainment industry. And they love what they do. They support C-suite executives and they love it. And that's what they wanted to do. 
right? So I think, you know, think about what you're doing today, what you love about what you're doing, and then, you know, where you want to go. And conversely, if there's things that you don't love about your job or the function that you have, what do you want to do about it, right? Are you asking those questions? Are you trying to figure out how to get to that next step of what you want? Do you need development? Do you need more education? Do you need more skills? You know, or is that opportunity in your company and you need to figure out how you're going to make that, you know, how you're going to get there. But I think knowing yourself is the most important thing and knowing that we change too. We may want to be exactly where we're at right now, and we're good for a couple of years, you know, because of whatever outside dynamics are going on in our life. And then two years from now, you may say, okay, now I'm ready. Now I want that next step. Or now I want to start, you know, my own company or, you know, whatever it is. So. That's really good. Yeah, that's great. I'm just looking. There was, uh, you know, some of the comments. Um, I've been in the administrative profession for 30 years and feeling burnt out need to re-engage, just not sure how. I, and, and I think even versus not even the 30-year part of it, I mean, yes, 30 years, I get that. <laughs> I Also, though, of course, we've read a lot about people now really feeling the burnout from the couple years of the pandemic, mm -hmm. where they were just pushing and doing, right, mm -hmm. and being, but now it's the after effect of the burnout. So, do you have some um, right now just some suggestions about that for those who are on and feel burnt out in their career? Yeah. So I think, again, it's um, trying burnout. to trying to figure out um, what it is that that you're tired of doing. Right. Is there one piece of your job that makes you tired? Is it who you're working for? Is it the company? Maybe you're not engaged with whatever the, you know, the mission of the company is, um, you know, or is it just that you feel like everything that's on your plate is too much? Mm. You know, I know that like there's been times in my life, especially during the pandemic where, you know, taking care of children at home and doing my job, it was a lot, you know, and I started to feel like weighed down by it. And so I had to, self-assess and figure out like, okay, do I need to do yoga in the middle of the day to make myself feel better? What do I need to do to put myself in a better frame of mind? Because to me, the positivity that you exude brings positivity back to you. So if you're burnt out, you got to figure out what the piece is that, that you have control to change, you know, or what is the plan, right, to make that yeah. change. That was really good that you identified I mean, you're getting more specific. Is it the, the job, the work, the people? Um, I think too, maybe it could also be boredom. I mean, <laughs> burnout in the sense that, oh, I've been doing this for so long. Like for me, I've been in the training, doing training and, you know, all of the speaking for 32 years. It could get boring, but I choose to not make it because boring to me makes you feel like you're tired and burnout. But in reality, sometimes we're just bored. And that's where I, I, for me, I use my creativity. I try to throw something in to kind of mix it up, to spice it up. And then I find I get rejuvenated and I get reinvigorated. So, right. And I think, you know, sometimes too, like I'm looking at some of the things in the chat about people feel like, you know, there's nothing that they can do at their current job. So, you know, my suggestion would be, you know, that you talk to a firm like mine um, and, and you see what the market is. So wherever you are, you know, in the nation or in the world, if we have an office near you, there's someone who can give you some advice and they can look at your resume and they can tell you, OK, here is what the market looks like today. Here are some jobs that we're seeing. And then you can start to test the market with your skills and see, OK, maybe I am good. Right. Because sometimes we go out there and we see what's available and what they're going to pay me for a new opportunity. And you may like it and it may be a great move. And other times you may say, you know what, actually, I don't have it so bad. You know, right now they give me some flexibility or, you know, right now um, there's, you know, there's things that I get because I've been there for a long time, you know, and, and we don't think about that, you know, when we make a move. 
right? So you want to, um, you know, it's really good to talk to someone. Um, if you have a mentor, that's great. A recruiter, anyone that can give you real advice for wherever you live and what's going on um, that can help you give you direction to. That's great advice. Um, I got so many things swirling through my head. I need to make little notes so then we could circle back if, if we can. Um, but I'll, let's move on. We'll go, we'll move on. Okay, this I know they're going to want to know. Um, there's been a lot of shifts after the past few years. So what are some of the in-demand skills that administrators should focus on developing in 2023? Yeah, absolutely. So technical skills. So I know we talked about this a lot um, at your convention and you had specific speakers that helped talk about this as well, but it is really those technical skills and being really good at whatever platform, you know, your company works on. And this back to having a mentor in your space or talking to a recruiter, these are good questions to ask. Like, you know, what sort of softwares are you hearing about that are in demand? You know, should I have really strong PowerPoint skills? Does it help if I have Excel skills, even though I'm an administrative assistant, not an accounting or finance person? Because we're starting to see that blend, right? We're starting to see administrative assistant jobs have a little bit of accounting to them where we didn't see it as much before. Maybe we saw it with office managers, but we saw it less with administrative assistants. Now we're starting to see that because some of the administrative assistant duties have become automated by companies. So you got to learn those softwares. Um, you got to get really good at every platform that they work on in your company. So again, you can be someone when someone's confused and you are the person that they come to, right? You're the savior. You're the person that saves the day because something's not working on somebody's computer or they don't, they're new and they don't know how to use it, right? And they say, oh, it's, it's, it's Carla. Carla knows how to do it. She's great at this, right? Yeah, and everyone's going to run to the assistant, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do. I call Malia <laughs> or Brian. Brian has to help me a lot, too. <laughs> but it, it's true that's usually yeah. who the executive's going to run to. I also have a thought too, I, I, that um, I talked about several years ago, that try to have the same device your executive has, have your company support you with the same devices. In other words, if you've got an executive who has a particular device and they're always running to you for help and you have something different, you can't help them. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like to me, mm -hmm. you know, I know I shouldn't say this, but the company should then invest in that tool for you because you're the one who has to, you know, be the savior, as you said, when your executive is like, oh, my gosh, like what's going on? Yeah, no, absolutely. Or sometimes they won't purchase you the software right, that other people are using. And then you're the one that people come to to ask why it's like to troubleshoot it and you have never been on it, right? So yeah. I think it's, you know, it's asking these questions. Yeah. What is everyone working on? And I'm not saying that the administrative assistant needs to be skilled in the ERP that the CFO is using, but there's many other, you know, areas that you can be skilled in and then you can become that person to be helpful or it opens up another career path for you at the company that you're with. Right. I've seen so many administrative assistants learn and take on new things because they ask for training. Right. They say, OK, um, do we have a training platform for that or could I research and find out how I could learn that software? You know, maybe I could take an extension course at my local university or maybe there's an online course and I could get skilled at that so I could help other people. Mm -hmm. That's again, back to making yourself memorable, making yourself, you know, um, you know, like invaluable. So. That's a great idea, getting the training, you know, requesting and asking for that training. Um, I've got something silly here I have to do a minute. I've got my foot heater on today because I was telling Alexandra <laughs> it is so cold and thick. <laughs> and it just kicked on and I don't want it to just make noise for everyone. So with We can't hear it, Joan, don't worry. <laughs> you did hear it or you no, don't? Can't oh, hear it. Okay. I was just I didn't want to be disruptive, but yes, it's actually cold in Las Vegas. Well, it'll be considered cold. Um, going back to the in-demand skills, so I uh, wanted to talk a moment in terms 
of the the human when where the human element comes into play in terms of uh, skills and the soft skills. So, um, and I don't know if we ever talked about this, Alexander, but I've been okay. We can talk about it now. Starting to talk a lot about assistants working in tandem with AI because now it, it's exploded the last two months. The the secrets out. Um, it's all over the place, and now there's a battle going on, um, you know, with companies like Microsoft and Google and all of these things. And so I've been really focusing a lot on this and, and utilizing it myself. Mm -hmm. So I think that's worth talking about where the, the soft skills are going to be very important. Like while I've been using AI, I'm realizing I still have to be, I have to be a strategic thinker. Yeah. I, I am not a robot. I can't be a robot. It's so is there maybe going to be rolling into using these technologies more and specifically AI? Yeah. What are the human element skills they need? Those soft skills? That well, I, I mean, I think, you know, verbal and written communication skills are not going to go away. Now we see a lot of the AI that it's helping college kids, you know, get into schools now. And so people are, you know, anything that they write, you can just, you know, go in and the AI can help you, but not everything. Yeah. Right. Not everything. We still we still need to be able to write um, good communication. And especially now, I think the written skills are really important. And, you know, as we've talked mm -hmm. about those communication skills and being able to communicate in a lot of different types of platforms. Right. So, you know, I mean, I don't know how many different inboxes I check every day. So I've got various different inboxes, people reaching out to me um, in that. And then I have, you know, the text message exchanges, you know, and we've we've talked about that before, like what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, like in the workplace. And then, you know, you just have a good ability to conduct a phone call, conduct a conference call. And how do you communicate with the people that you're working for? And again, this has gotten so tricky with the hybrid work. Right. How are you staying in communication with the busy executives that you're supporting and making sure that, you know, you're getting done what they what they need to get done? And they're not just, you know, frustrated and they haven't told you because they haven't seen you in the office in two days. Right. So I think being able to truly communicate um, time management skills, those are a skill that AI cannot do for us. We have to, you know, stay on time. And, you know, one thing that I would say is, is, a, is a difficult skill now that we've all gotten into this, you know, lots of Zoom meetings back to back is yes. staying on time. And if you can help your, I, I struggle with this, I will tell you, because I'm a talker, if everyone, anyone has noticed. But anyhow, <laughs> so like I will lose track, right? When I'm on a call and I get excited about whoever I'm talking to. <laughs> And, um, you know, if I had an executive assistant that was watching my schedule, you mm -hmm. know, um, I have a friend um, who works for Disney and he has an executive assistant that will send him a message. You're five minutes away from your next meeting. You're, you know, I'm like, that's amazing. I <laughs> you know, know, right? So it is, though. Those sort of things. And whether or not that was part of that person's job description or that was something that they came up to help the executive that they're supporting. Now that we've gone to this, you know, Zoom world where even when people are in, an, in office, they're on back to max. Right. So, oh, exactly. you know, I think it's time management and helping you know, the people you support, you know, being able to multitask and take on various things at the same time, and then your own flexibility. So the, none of those AI can do for you. Yeah. Those are all skills that you have uh, to, you know, own and hone. So. And that's where, I mean, that, this, that's a whole other conversation. And I see I created kind of chaos in the chat where everybody's like, AI, AI, is that Grammarly? No, it isn't. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to be doing some programs or hosting some things specifically on that topic. So uh, we'll get you back over here. Sorry, but it, it is going, it's definitely in the forefront. So it's something that has to be acknowledged and something that assistants need to learn the skills that they do need. Like you still need judgment skills with that. You still need to, like I said, think strategically. It's not that you just type stuff in and get all these answers. You have to be able to sort through that, identify it. So, you know, is there, we're talking about jumpstarting your career. Well, 
and we're talking about the skills, that's going to be something that they're going to have to focus on because it's here now and it's happening really fast. Mm -hmm. So um, the next one, how, well, how can administrative professionals stay up to date with the latest technologies and tools in their field? Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I think we, we talked, you know, we talked about this a little bit already, but it's, um, it's asking questions, you know, it's talking to other people that do what you do and, you know, asking them, okay, well, what are you doing at your job and what new things are you learning? So I think curiosity is huge in advancing your career, right? You, you know, you, you got to know what other people are doing and don't wait for someone to tell you. Don't wait for them to task you, right? Oh yeah, you need to learn this new software. We feel like this is the wave. Ask people, you know, a lot of times you'll have friends that do similar things to what you do. Or if you don't, again, you know, talk to a recruiter and ask what the top things, you know, we'll, we'll put some of our blogs in here, but Robert Half has lots of information out there that you can read about, you know, what's, what's trending and what's happening, so. Because we're taking these job orders every day, so we definitely hear about it. <laughs> what are you seeing, by the way, really quick in some of the, are there certain uh, skills or requests within those job orders that keep coming up? Where you see it, yeah. I think you know all the all the cloud-based collaboration tools, whether it's like MS Teams or Google Workspace, Office 365, SharePoint, Zoom. So for administrative administrative assistants, really being very versed in that, so um, so that they can they can truly help their executives because not all the executives have gotten as versed on it. So again, you know, they're having to be on these calls and they're having to do these things. And then sometimes they don't really know how to use the platform. You know, I've been on those funny calls where people have the wrong background that they don't mean to have. Right. You know, like what was that mean where the person put the cat on their face and they couldn't get the cat off because they don't know what they're doing. Right. So they need help. <laughs> I think, you know, we're seeing project management, we're seeing human resources, um, customer service, all of these sort of things factor into roles that maybe they didn't used to factor into. So maybe they were very isolated before, and now we're seeing things blending. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Check that one off my list. Uh, we talked about, oh, this would be a good one. I'm well, I should stay in order because that's the script you have. So <laughs> I, what about the trends? That was one of the questions. Are there any uh, trends, which was kind of what I was asking, but I was asking that more in, in specific job orders, you know, when people are looking yeah. for jobs, but are there overall trends that you've observed in the profession? I think, you know, just, just, I would say just very simply stronger technical skills. Okay. So, you know, where maybe the demand um, 10, 15 years ago was stronger phone skills. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing much stronger on the technical side. Okay. Uh, you've talked about leadership, which has been one of my favorite subjects for admins for years um always talking about how you don't have to be in a management position to be a leader and so you also had talked about leadership being really important mm -hmm. and so uh let's see what leadership attributes are important for administrative professionals to have so i think you know showing initiative um you know like what we talked about right like you know, asking for more, mm -hmm. you know, if you're bored and you don't think there's, you know, enough that's really making you excited, you know, what are you asking to learn? You know, how are you staying visible? So, you know, I think that we talked about this before, um, you know, when there's calls, do you always come on camera? You know, do you avoid coming on camera some days because you just didn't have time to get ready to be on camera in the way that makes you feel comfortable, right? You know, think about how, you know, those meetings where you have the opportunity to speak to people that you work for, be ready for those, right? I think that especially 
when you're working from home, you know, um, if any of you are hybrid, sometimes people, you know, can not dress in work appropriate clothing because they're working from home. And when you think about it, we only need to be work appropriate from the waist up. Yeah. So you can still be in your sweats. I know sometimes I am. Um, so, but don't lose those opportunities, right? You know, there have been times where, you know, I've been on calls and maybe I wasn't ready because, you know, my kids took too long getting, re getting ready for school and we were late or whatever was happening, right? And so then when I went on the call, I didn't feel comfortable going on camera. And those are missed opportunities. And I really try to avoid those, you know? Um, so sometimes I have like the quick fix to get myself ready versus like, you know, a completely ready um, day. But I, you know, I, I highly encourage you to try to be visible, be in front of them, even if your other colleagues are not. And sometimes that can be uncomfortable. You get on a group call and maybe the boss is on camera and everyone else isn't. You know, how can you stand right. out? So some of the things that I suggest is maybe you join the call a couple minutes early so that you are on when the first couple of people join and you go on camera then and you say hello. And then maybe you go off camera when everybody else goes off, but you've already come on to make that personal connection. So funny question. Are you in sweats now? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not either. I do notice because when I'm like in my business theme clothes, I feel different. I feel like, you know, I'm really on my, I'm on my game, you know, um, quick question. I remember speaking about when you said showing up, being on camera, right? But mm -hmm. I remember when we last talked, this would be very good for you to mention. You are a leader. You are in a leader, a uh, high level position. And you had told me last time that when we talked, you were you were having a staff meeting, I believe, that day in the office. Yes. And you didn't force people to come in, but you suggested they come in. Yeah. And hardly no one showed up and you were disappointed by that and felt that that is something people should have hey, stepped up and, and thought about, gee, I better I should show up. Yeah, so I think this is a good example of the changes in where we're at today in the workplace. Um, I don't think, <clears throat> well, I know that wouldn't have happened, you know, 10 years ago. So I think, you know, people, you know, how maybe how an executive or manager will communicate whether or not they're, you know, they really want people in or not, um, you know, is important. But if, you know, if, if there's an opportunity for you to meet in person with who you work for, and maybe it's, you know, it's a review or something, and even if they give you the option for you to go virtual, think about how much more impactful that connection would be if you're in person. And, and think like, okay, <clears throat> well, can I make that work? You know, can I can I switch my schedule around because my boss would like to meet with me face to face? So my suggestion is that you do that as often as you can. It doesn't always work. We have mm -hmm. things that we're trying to manage in our life. So nothing is perfect. But um, in the situation that you're talking about, it was um, it wasn't a meeting that was going to happen weekly. Right. And I think that's part of the career strategy. I always I always felt even when I was out of high school and, you know, in my secretarial years, I was strategic on how I positioned myself because I did want to be seen. I did want to be visible. I wanted opportunities. I wanted to move up the ladder, you know, as well. So I feel like today you, uh, people need to be more strategic to think strategically because what does that do? You want to be memorable. You're the only one who showed up and the others did. You're going to be memorable in a good way that yeah. you did take the extra time. You did get dressed. You did do, you know what I'm saying? Those to me are things that are the subliminal career strategies. Mm -hmm. There's intentional, right? And there's unintentional. And to me, that's an unintentional, but it will, it, it's noticed. Right. And I think, you know, one other thing, and hopefully this relates to what we're talking about now, but it is embracing change. 
one of the things that I've noticed in, um, you know, just different people I've known in my life, if they've been struggling in their career, sometimes they will say to me, well, I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. And they want me to change because of whatever dynamic it is. You know, companies changing a product that they're selling or they're changing the way they do things or they're changing the structure of the department. And the person will say to me, well, I don't wanna make a change. Like I'm happy with what I'm doing. So one piece of advice that I would say is everything is always changing and work on that ability in yourself to be open to embracing the change, be ahead of it, right? Ask questions, try to be the one that embraces it and encourages others to embrace it because that's a leader, right? So in whatever area and whatever you're doing in your life, if you can try to embrace that for your career, it will make things you know, much better for you, in my opinion. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's see, I wanna get to a question before we go to Q&A that I know probably most of our attendees are interested in, and it, it was last on our list, but how can administrative professionals effectively negotiate for higher salaries and promotions? So, and we're going to put some things in the chat um, for this. We're going to put a salary guide that we have to give you some information on what different roles within the administrative um, assistant world are paying. And then also a blog on negotiating salaries. But let me say my piece. So I want to tell you, you have things to take away um, with you. But um, one, you need to gather information. You need to know how you're being paid versus the market. Okay. So, and then you need to know information about your company. So do you work for a small company? Do you work for a large company? What is on your plate? How many people do you, you know, do you basically take care of on a daily basis so that you know, like what your role is? Because sometimes your title may not reflect your duties. Sometimes people are under titled, sometimes they're over titled. So you want to do your research first. So you can look at ads online, you can talk to a recruiter, right? So you want to have your research and then you want to be ready to go in and have the conversation. So that conversation you know, sometimes happens in accordance with an annual review, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you've had your annual review and you're frustrated and maybe you didn't get an increase that you were looking for. So you want to prepare the information as to why. Okay. And I think I may have talked a little bit about this at the convention, but you want to have your information and then you want to present it not as a walk away. You want to present it as this is what I'm looking for. And and is that something, you know, that I can have today? Do you have advice for me on how I can get there so that your manager doesn't feel that you're threatening them? They feel that you've presented them with you know, what you really want. And then they have the opportunity to say, okay, I think that this is something that we can, we can work towards, or maybe we can do this now. Um, but I always suggest to people, if they're unhappy with what they're making, do your research, but then ask for the money. Your guide is fabulous. I absolutely, absolutely love it because I, you know, and I've seen it many times, right? I loved how you break it down. Not only by titles, but you've got, depending on where you live, what city you live in, you have to act times this number. Like, I don't think people realize I, I worked in several different states and what I made in Cleveland, Ohio, when we moved south, I took like a $10,000 reduction because we moved to this little town in the south because yeah. of my husband's career. If you're in New York, it's one thing. If you're in California, it's another. If you're in, you know, middle of you know, in a small town. So I love the guy because it, it really, you have the formula. Mm -hmm. um, how and now it's interactive. So right? it's, you oh, know, it's, it's online, it's interactive. You can just do pull downs. It's really easy to manipulate and use. Um, and, but you're right. And then also sometimes, you know, maybe you want your life to take you somewhere else right? You want to live somewhere else. So then you can look into, okay, if I moved, what do my, what are my skills worth in mm -hmm. another state, in another area, 
right? And that's helpful too, because then you can cross reference that to what the real estate is and how much it would cost right. you to live there, right? Right. Excellent. Yes. All right. We're going to go to questions because I think there's probably several, Malia. Um, and I want to make sure we. we get it's to gone too fast, that. Joan. <laughs> I know. It always does. It always does very fast. And I know this is great uh, conversation and you have so much insight. I love it. So, Malia, do you want to go ahead? Okay. There are so many questions and I have to apologize ahead of time because I don't think we're going to get to all of them. <laughs> minutes all right but we can try right okay yeah. okay Jeanette wants to know I she says she's always gone outside her scope of work she uh, she's had managers appreciate it and others that question it what do you do when a manager just wants you to do the job you're assigned to she loves to grow <sighs> that's a tough one right find a new manager no um so <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, I think you you have to know what the person that you're working for wants. And if what they want you to do is just in a box, that goes back to our earlier discussion. Is that the right person for you to work for? Can you continue to grow with someone that wants you to do a very limited amount of things? So, um, you know, I always feel you got to make the person happy that you work for, but maybe that isn't the person that you always want to work for if you're not going to grow. Okay, thank you. Um, Leah supports three executives. One executive will not let her in. She does handle their calendar and schedule some meetings, but that's about it. Any tips on how to get in? <laughs> Uh, you need to figure out why the person won't let you in, right? So maybe if if there is a way to find out from, you know, the other people that you work for, um, how can I be more of service to this person? You know, I don't know if the, if if this um, individual has asked those questions, if this individual has asked for one on one time with that particular manager, where you know. She or he can ask, um, you know, is there anything more I can do? Here's what I'm really enjoying and what I'm learning at the company. I would love to also do this for you. Sometimes people just don't want it, right? And so then maybe you focus on the other two that want you to do more and you see how, again, your career can continue to grow with being, you know, more of assistance to them. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Donna wants to know, would it be better to have a functional resume for a seasoned admin wanting to move after several years in administrative role? Many have, sorry, many have project program management skills. I'm sorry, this isn't finished. This is and others. Did that make sense to you? <laughs> Is, is the person asking if they should have a functional resume, like my like resume based on dates? Is that what they mean? Is an admin wanting to move after several years in the administrative role? But what's the, what's, I guess, what's the question? I know. I'm so sorry. We'll come, we'll write her. I'm sorry. Okay. No, 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 no problem. All right, Donna. Um, okay. Would like to get advice on how to deal with or work with someone that just wants to do their work and leave. They don't seem to have any sense of teamwork in their mind. So, and, and I don't know if this is a manager or a colleague, um, but I think my advice goes for both. You know, if it's, if it's a manager, you have to approach it a little more delicately and find out like how we can work, you know, together, you know, as a team. And, and if it's a teammate, right? If it's somebody else that you have to work with, um, then I would seek the advice of my manager first. I would let my manager know, hey, I'm really interested in partnering with this person in these areas. You know, how would you suggest I approach that conversation? Because if it's a colleague, sometimes it can not go well if you approach it without the advice of your manager. Okay, thank you. Marlene would like to know, what if you think you did something memorable and other people don't think that's the case. Well, it happens. Or you do something that you think is great and no one notices. You know, <laughs> keep looking for new things to do. 
you know, keep, keep, keep looking, um, for something else, um, that you can do. And, um, you know, we have to reward ourselves, right? And we have to acknowledge ourselves. So if you feel it was memorable, then find a way to pat yourself on the back and say, I did a good job. Okay, now I'm gonna look for something else. Because sometimes people are so busy that they don't have time to tell us that something was great. And they may think it. This will happen with me. Sometimes I will go back, you know, on something that maybe happened a week ago or two weeks ago, and I will acknowledge the person. And it is not that it didn't, like appear to me as memorable at that moment. It was just that there was too much on my plate. So keep looking for more. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lisa says she loves her company. She's been there 26 years. She's about to tap out on salary, yet she's seeing higher ranges in the marketplace. She brought this to the attention of the compensation department, but they say they are in line with the marketplace. Not sure what more she can do, any recommendations? Yeah, I mean, I think she did what she needs to do, right? She, she, you know, addressed it with the compensation department who, you know, are given their information and their guidance from the finance and CFO of the company, right? So if, you know, if she's provided them with this information, then there, there really isn't anything else there that she can do. But if you've been there for 26 years, you have to test the market, right? See what your skills are worth in the market. Do an interview, even if it's an informational interview, um, to see because you may have it really good there. So there may be perks and things that you're getting based on your tenure. Um, so I would just suggest that you look into the market. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, Lisa would like to know what is the distinction between professional image and professional branding? I mean, I think professional image is putting yourself together in, in a way that looks appropriate for work, right? So every company is going to feel differently about that. So when, you know, when I was early in my career, as I mentioned, I worked in the music business. We wore anything that we want, we wanted. I mean, it didn't, you know, it didn't matter. And then when I moved into the recruiting business, I was wearing suits four days a week because that's what was appropriate. So that was my, you know, the image that, that I was putting out. But in terms of the branding, right, like that's, that's what you're putting out to the market that that has to do with your communication skills and the way that you're presenting yourself and, you know, and nonverbal skills. So and how you're presenting your company, maybe your knowledge of the company that you work for. So that would be, you know, you could have your personal brand or you could have your brand within your company. That's interesting. I want to jump in on that one because for years in our star achievement series course, and a few standalones, we covered professional image, which for many years was the appearance, the dress. Yeah. Um, I did incorporate body language and speech, but anyway, a lot of it focused on dress, the colors you, even the colors you wear and what mm -hmm. they mean and what they represent and even print. I mean, we got really detailed, but um, I've updated that curriculum now, you know, the last several months to be we're calling it, you know, generation two because for the new world and the new generation. So interestingly in the book where I had a whole segment on it and it was very detailed, I pulled all of that out. I'm not talking about image anymore because everything, I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying the shift that I've been making to accommodate the world because organizations now, I mean, a lot of them just don't, care how their people show up it's mm -hmm. wear what you want dress how you want mm -hmm. but all you can let you know any of your body art show there's like years ago it was very in a box mm -hmm. right black and white here's what you do here's what you don't do if you want to be portrayed professional in your dress and so it's been really interesting for me to and to watch this shift and mm -hmm. what am i going to keep and not keep in my material now if a company wants me to specifically address that topic, we will, but for the general overall use, I've mm -hmm. taken that out and I've shifted to the brand. 
the whole section now is about the brand and what is the brand like you said it could it involves your communications mm -hmm. it you know it's um it could be your that you're a very calm person is a part of your brand or your uh, a fireball is part of your mm -hmm. brand um it encompasses if you're trustworthy if you're loyal i mean those are it's that like whole huge package right is our brand and so um being really intentional today about your brand because if you don't create and choose the brand you want you're going to be branded anyways by people yeah, yeah. well and i think you also have to you know really look at the company that you work for and you know so you can you can put it in with the branding on how are your communication skills versus your peer group there you know how are you how you know like i i love that piece about are you a calm person are you someone that people can trust right are you someone that can be brought into a sticky situation and you can help solve it right because you can handle things right but I think there is a huge variety. A lot of you know, guidance that I give um, other companies is you've got to have flexibility with your employees. I even say it on the, you know, on the virtual calls, like you don't always need to show up all decked out. Let your employees see you, you know, with your hair in a scrunchie. Like it's okay, right? Maybe you just finished a workout, right? Like it's okay. Let them let them see that so that they come on just like that. But I think to your point, you know, it really is much more about what can the person do in the role? What can they accomplish, right, in the role? And what are the what are their strongest skills versus, you know, how they come together in the office and do the colors work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a big change. All right, go ahead, Malia, better, another question. Okay, Anne-Marie wants to know, how can you negotiate a higher salary when you realize that other executive admins are being paid more, more than you for the same level? In New York now, you mu they must reveal salary ranges for positions listed. How can you ask for more? She says it's always been a difficult discussion for her. Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult, it's a difficult discussion for so many people uh, and that's why you need to be prepared going in. So it looks like she knows already that people are making more. There is pay transparency laws that have come out in which the employers need to give those ranges and you know that's going to be helpful um, and it's already helpful for people that are willing to put their self out there and ask the question. So I see that the range is to this much and I'm making this much, what can I do to get up to that level? And I think that's really the question, right? So you do your research, you go in and you have an effective conversation to find out how you get there. You know, and then hopefully they're gonna give you something that you can take away and something that you can do so that you can get your pay up. Awesome, okay. Um, Sherry wants to know from either of you, are there um, is there a form, survey, paper form, anything that she can go through with the boss to find out more about their personality, work attitude, preferences, et cetera? That's interesting. Um, I don't know if there's something on our website we could look um, for something and then send it back out to this group that's come. Um, but, you know, I think reveal things about yourself and see what you get back, right? If you're trying to learn about something, somebody, sometimes you need to be a little vulnerable about yourself within reason, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, try, try to find out some information and see if you can get to know them and then you can get to know more about how to better support them. There are, I would say the same thing. There's, we have a communication styles assessment um, that we use a lot in our training. I, I'm not sure if it's on our website. I think it might be, um, but that helps with commute to find out if someone has a preferred communication style. Mm -hmm. But I, I always think it's just great to really observe that person and really observe how do they like to work and are they high energy in the morning or do they have more of that energy in the afternoon do they prefer a lot of detailed information so to me it's when i was the secretary I was observing yeah. a lot now yeah you're in a virtual world but it, it is paying attention how do they write how do they 
communicate? How do they like things? Do they want it fast? Do they want it slow? Um, do they want you to be decisive and quick? You know, I know I'm, I'm a decisive person. Don't be wishy-washy with me. And I'm sure my team picks up on it. So being really observant and listening and paying attention, there are a lot of assessments you can search out there. There's personality assessments, there's leadership assessments. And I think just having a good old conversation. Mm -hmm. It's almost you like know, a reverse who, reference. Who, you know, like, like, I would say maybe to Lisa, so Lisa, tell me, what are your hot buttons? What do you, yeah. how, what's your work style? Yeah. What, you know, just ask you straight out one of these things I want to know about you. But sometimes, okay, so when I'm hiring somebody and I'm doing a reference on them, I always ask their former employer, what motivates them? When did you get the best work out of them? Right. Like, how do they like to be rewarded? Do they like to be told they're doing great in front of other people? Do they like it to be private? Like, what is going to get the most out of this person? So, you know, when you go to work for somebody, you don't have that. Right. You don't get a reference, you know, on them. So you've got to try to figure those things out. And to Joan's point, like it's observation and it's conversation with them. So sometimes people don't know themselves, unfortunately. So if you say like, what's your work style? What do you like? And they're like, well, I just like things to be done correctly. And they're like, okay, that doesn't really help me. Um, so, you know, you, you have to observe what they're like and observe when they compliment you. If they don't compliment you, observe that, right? So that you're trying to figure out a way when you have those one-on-ones, you know, I, I I noticed that like you seem to be happy with my work, but I noticed that nothing really seems to stand out or you've mentioned anything like teach me how I can stand out to you. Right. Like what else could I be doing? Yeah, that's awesome. Well, oh goodness, it's 1101. All right. So everyone just give us two more minutes, maybe three. OK, <laughs> I know we could talk forever with you. Um, I just have a couple of quick announcements that I want to wrap up with Alexandra. Uh, cause I, if you have to go off, I don't want to forget to tell you these things. Our world-class assistant certification designation course starts March 9th. Our orientation actually starts March 2nd. So if you want to join on, um, uh, join in that class, I don't know, the next one might not be till fall. So if you'd like to get in on that. And then our save the dates, so let's say Enlighten is our mid-year virtual training for you. And that is June 15 and 16. And we'll be getting details out in a few weeks. We are just confirming all our speakers and our tracks for you. Our 30th year conference is this year in October in Las Vegas. You can register now. And February, actually, I'm, I'm going to do another webinar this month. I'll do it by myself. So you get two webinars this month <laughs> from us. But um, Alexandra, thank you so, so much for your time. Any uh, closing words or comments or how um, they can stand No, I mean, you? I think, you know, as, as I mentioned, we're going to drop, uh, it looks like we dropped some things in the chat uh, yeah. that, that will be helpful to all of you. I'm on LinkedIn. Please link in with me. My connections may help you get linked to somebody else and feel free to send me any questions that you might have. Um, Joan, you're such an incredible resource. This company is amazing. I'm just so thankful to partner with you in this way. And I thank you for having me today. Yes, you are quite welcome. Well, thank you, everyone. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Bye, Bye Alexandra. <laughs>